and from that point of view i think now we'll kind of go towards the physiotherapy management of uh, scoliosis and uh, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis so we'll now move uh our talk to dr purva devi and she will be talking about the conservative management after surgery uh, operative management and how surgeons decide how they kind of uh, treat uh, adults with idiopathic scoliosis so i guess i will now uh, hand over the session to dr purva devi ma'am please thank you ma'am i'll now share my screen Adolescent idiopathic scoliosis (AIS) is the most commonest type of scoliosis. So, as we are aware, the scoliosis is anything, uh, any deviation more than ten degrees is termed as uh, scoliosis. And AIS, being the commonest type of scoliosis, occurs uh, primarily in the age ten to eighteen years and continues till uh, skeletal maturity. Uh, approximately, it affects two to four percent of adolescents, and uh, like uh, how sir mentioned, females have a tenfold greater risk of curve progression. Now, due to this curve, uh, this the progression of curve can cause cosmetic problems, muscle weakness, and emotional distress. And the alarming concerns are rib deformity and respiratory compromise. Curves which are more than fifty uh, degrees in thoracic. and more than 30 degrees in lumbar can cause greater pulmonary deficit and uh, with increased vertebral compression can also land up with uh, spondylosis and dysphysis uh, and that can also be uh, quite tedious to uh, manage the clinical parameters have been discussed by sir before and just enumerate uh, classically we look at the curvature of spine by looking at the x ray mri cobb's angle is the uh, line of measurement any uh, surgical options are considered more than 45 degrees of cobb's angle and conservative management is considered in the range to 20 to 40 degrees also um, clinically we look at adams formed bent test wherein we rule out whether it is a structural uh, sort of scoliosis or a functional scoliosis scoliometers inclinometer assess the trunk asymmetry then uh, to check the respiratory function we do the pft test and uh, spirometry assessment for uh, assessing fev1 fpc um also the lumbar and cervical range of movement assessment is crucial and so is manual muscle strength of spine muscles the outcome measures we used uh, use uh, for screening of the daily um, activities or the quality of life in scoliosis patients could be uh, sf36 which uh, addresses overall quality, uh, quality of life srs22 srs7 addresses quality of life in spinal deformity patients the perception of trunk deformity and body image is uh, done by walter and reed visual assessment scale uh, and uh, spinal appearance scale as a q trunk appearance perception scale is uh, <clears throat> again another uh, sort of uh, form of perception of trunk deformity and uh, there's another uh, outcome measure we use for uh, the impact of brace that is the brace questionnaire and uh, bad soberheim stress questionnaire now going uh, forward with the conservative management primarily it could be divided in uh, six types bracing which forms the main part in uh, conservative management Uh, followed by the scoliosis corrective exercises i'll be talking about sproth seas uh, and we also use auto correction claps exercises which are the newer form of exercises neuro motor control uh, uh, includes the <clears throat> includes uh, improvement in muscle strength and core activation and different techniques respiratory function is again uh, increased by spirometry acbt thoracic expansion exercises then comes uh, to deal with the balance and equilibrium issues we have coordination and proprioception uh, based exercises and uh, most important is the cognitive behavioral therapy uh, which also forms a uh, important form of exercise looking at bracing uh, the <clears throat> an older way of bracing or an older uh, technique in bracing is the milwaukee brace it's an active corrective spinal orthosis 
and it is primarily used in 20 to 40 degrees of Cobb's angle. It's basically a plastic contour to confirm the body, comes with a neck ring with a throat mold and two occipital uh, pads to avoid high pressure at the neck level. The aim here is to remind the patient to retract chin and keep head posteriorly against the occipital pads. Uh, the rib rotation is corrected by the pressure pads. The prerequisites uh, for this particular base is uh, teens who haven't reached their active growth spurt because after that it is not of much use. And this curve stays under observation with the curve's angle interval. The, the next form of bracing is Charleston bending brace, uh, also now considered as the gold standard in modern day treatment of AIS. <clears throat> it works on the three point pressure system. And uh, the objective here is uh, to biomechanically correct foliosis via stabilizing, lateral shifting, and unbending forces. So uh, works on the three-point pressure system. Now compared to Milwaukee, Milwaukee is a daytime bracing technique, which uh, has an extensive uh, bracing time, 16 to 24 hours. hours. And uh, this is better uh, comparatively because it is a nighttime bracing and it is only used for eight to 10 hours. This has also freed the uh, patients from the stigma and the constraints of the lengthy bracing type. Here in, uh, it's a custom fitted based uh, on cast taken over the, uh, taken of the patient's torso. And it is uh, designed is mold, mold, uh, molded based on King's type classification. The early three classification primarily decide the <clears throat> customization of this brace. Now, uh, this, the way it works is stabilization is applied to the pelvis on the concave side of the lumbar curve. The lateral force is applied to the apex of the lumbar curve and the unbending force is applied to the axillary region on the concave side of the lumbar curve and thereby because of this the coronal plane deformity is corrected. The next form of braces also commonly used uh, are Boston brace and the Wilmington brace. They are all rigid bracing, uh, prefabricated and they also work on the pressure system. Uh, Wilmington on the other hand is a cast model molded brace and the corrective forces are applied after the cast is prefabricated. Now uh, with this, the bracing part, uh, next comes the most important part in conservative management is the corrective exercises. Formerly, we have been using scroth for a really long time. Uh, scroth method has uh, really uh, helped and uh, scol helped scoliosis uh, patients largely over years. This, this method is aimed at realigning uh, the curved spine to a more natural position. The three principles on which they, uh, this work is uh, derotation, derotation, elongation, and stabilization. It's a 3D approach uh, that addresses the curve from all angles. Now the exercises can be performed uh, with this method in all uh, positions, lying down, standing, uh, or sitting with the usage of props like therapy balls, grab bars, and poles. Here, in what, uh, with these exercises, we correct or deflect the head alignment and sagittal plane. We uh, also sort of with this auto elongation, we cause the muscles to uh, the, the shortened muscles and to lengthen them in the concave side and uh, stretch the muscles on the concave side. <clears throat> the adjuncts to this principle are concentration, coordination, and uh, effective breathing. So the muscles are well adapted to balance the length tension relationship. This exercise addresses three important components, muscle, muscular symmetry bec uh, because of the uh, imbalance created by the curve. The concave side muscles are shortened and weak and the tissues on the convex side are lengthened and overworked. So this will help in uh, <clears throat> balancing these muscles and sort of uh, creating the more natural curve. Rotational angular breathing, we, uh, this breathing technique helps to rotate the spine by reshaping the ribcage uh, or reshaping the ribcage muscles. <clears throat> and there has been uh, concrete evidence to prove that Scroth method has been uh, very helpful 
because of the breathing technique and awareness of posture uh, this is done in uh, with the help of mirror therapy mirror therapy in in you constantly reminding and correcting your posture in front of the mirror and then auto correction can be achieved <clears throat> there are various types of exercises we primarily use the most important uh, the most uh, commonest used uh, are in, in our department is the door handle exercises the frog at the pond when you are elongating your limbs to the maximum stretch position and thereby achieving a natural spine the various forms of exercises which are uh, used or which are performed in scrot method the other type of exercises which are being recently <clears throat> uh, used is the SEAS scientific exercise approach to scoliosis this form of exercise is more of an auto correction than an auto elongation kind of exercise it's a modern technique which uses neuropsychological uh, basis to it used in uh, low degrees of spine to uh, this is primarily used to avoid bracing here and we train a neuromotor function uh, by stimulating the reflex and you correct your posture uh, like you, the technique involves self correction than using any props or any external device now it is better than the former part the only thing is you are you can do it anywhere and you uh, are correcting your posture by yourself and there by the muscles are trained to uh, perform a more neuro uh, physiological uh, activity <clears throat> these exercises could be open chain or closed chain but the downside to this treatment is it requires rigorous mental preparation and a good high hand uh, eye hand coordination as well uh, the other form of exercise are claps exercise where you go on all your fours and apply pressure and you uh, <clears throat> where you produce the pressure on your uh, core extensors and uh, uh, and by, by you go on your fours and you try to correct the natural uh, correct the curve by just auto correcting your posture neuromotor control exercises will include uh, strengthening of upper limb and lower limb limb exercises respiratory function test by spirometry thoracic expansion exercises and cognitive behavioral therapy yes uh, sceas which i was just mentioning about this is sort of auto correction exercise where you train yourself by correcting your posture and uh, addressing it uh, by realigning your re realigning to a more natural posture post surgical management uh, sir has briefly gone through the surgical part and uh, post surgical management usually involves reeducating the weakened uh, core muscles uh, reeducating the spinal muscle effective upper limb and lower limb re rehabilitation postural correction and pulmonary function maintenance based on the uh, uh, phases or the weeks uh, post surgically yes Uh, i think that is the end of the conservative management part from my side ma'am you can stop the share that's okay so thank you dr purva devi for that again a very informative talk about how physiotherapists can help in adults in idiopathic scoliosis which is one of the most commonest form of scoliosis uh, i thank both of you all from uh, viewers of physiotherapy as well as the whole team of physio tv uh, before we conclude the show i would just like a little brief question to kind of dr ayer as well as to dr purva devi so sir what i would like to really ask you is uh, i mean we do see a lot of these adolescents which can come right from the age of 10 onwards and uh, you have given us a little details about how you choose a uh, patient for surgery but is there any time uh, or a perfect time to get operated or it is based only on 
uh, the presentation by the patient, if the rib hump is prominent, if there's respiratory compromise, if there's a rapid progression of the curve or there's a coronal imbalance, are these the only criteria of choosing? Because we do see certain parents bringing in their kids very late for surgery. It's very close to when they are at manageable age, around 16, 18, when they suddenly start becoming very conscious of the physical appearance. And that's when, or is, is it better that they come in much earlier and, you know, get it properly diagnosed and assessed by an orthopedic surgeon so as to have the surgery done at the right age? And the second part of the same question would be, uh, is are all surgeries done at one go or do they undergo some staged procedure? So um, first question, uh, in terms of age, uh, if it is less, quite often these are congenital curves and they might be infantile curves. Infantile curves, the majority will do well with brace and they settle in about one or two years of bracing. Congenital curves are completely opposite. They will keep growing depending on the nature of congenital deformity. So if you say a hemivertebra that's fully segmented, uh, that might have potential of up to 30 degrees of coronal pain deformation. If there are two hemis on the same side, you are looking at 60 degrees. If the two hemis are associated with the vertebral bar on the comp con con contralateral side, then that could even be more than 60 degrees. So depending on the deformity, there will be a growth potential. But by and large, what we have to allow is for the lung growth to happen. So lung grows in two forms. One is 0 to 5 or 0 to 8, so to say. That is the golden years of lung growth. In that period, the lung adds alveoli in terms of number. And then beyond 8, what you get is hyperplasia of the alveoli. So there is no actual addition in alveoli, but the alveoli increase in size to give you more lung function capacity. So we do not offer definitive surgery in this zero to eight year period because if we do a fusion formally, one is you will in reduce your lung alveoli hyperplasia. You can look at very severe restrictive diseases of the lung which can lead to core pulmonar or even uh, right-sided heart failure by the time the patient gets into his 30s and 40s. The second thing is at that young age, you have to watch for crankshaft. So if I fuse say from T4 to say T12, over 5 or uh, over 10 segments. The anterior growth plate of those 9 or 8 vertebra that is there in that 10 segment is continuing to grow. I have tethered the posterior part by doing a fusion with screws and rods, but the anterior keeps growing, so it kind of buckles and in fact can progress with crankshaft where you rods can break, screws can break, and in fact the curve can suddenly grow from 20 degree to 60 degree because it kind of contorts on itself over that rigid posterior tether. So in those sense for congenital, infantile and juvenile, we do not wish to offer surgery before the age of 10 quite often. We would look at growth-friendly surgery, either casting, bracing or growth rods also, which will have serial distraction every six months till we buy time to get to a formal fusion, which will be done at 10. Another point for juvenile curves is they have a lot of time cord anomalies with them. So there may be a coexisting syrinx or a diastem or a Arnold Carey malformation and those need to be watched out for. When you come to adolescent idiopathic, the curves that are presenting after the age of 10 or 11, those quite often we are happy to fuse sooner also, provided they meet the surgical criteria for a fusion. So they should have a cosmetic concern that's significant. They should have a curve at least magnitude of 40 whereby there is some shoulder asymmetry or some rib hump that is a cosmetic concern. And then those cases, I don't think doing the surgery at 12 versus 14 or 12 versus 16 is much of a difference because by the 10th or 12th year, once you have completed Minarch, like I showed on those triangles, most of the growth spurt is over. In fact, girls uh, on the growth charts will stop growing by 15. Boys, yeah, you might say that boys might grow up to 17. So if the curve is borderline 30-ish, you know, so you might say to the parents that since you're a boy, your son is having scoliosis, it's a boy, he might be growing up to 16. So let's take one more year of growth because fix a 40 degree curve or a 50 degree curve is not going to change much in terms of technical complexity. But I would not leave it so late where he comes back and he has an 80 degree curve. So then going from 40 to 80 correction is a big correction. So give and take, it becomes like, okay, six monthly follow-up, let's find a suitable time, both in terms of the family, patient and the doctor, and then advise surgery at that time. So I hope I've answered both questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Surely so.
Uh, moving on to Dr. Purva Devi, my question to you is uh, the Scrotts uh, therapy for uh, scoliosis management overall uh, is kind of picking up a lot of interest uh, and uh, they have shown uh, a lot of evidence is also being published in literature about the same. So from that point of view, but it seems to be an intensive therapy. If we kind of read about it, it does uh, take its time and it is very uh, therapy intensive kind of a treatment protocol. Uh, so in case uh, any of the therapists want to get into this or they want to follow the Sprouts therapy, what is usually the program which we kind of uh, advocate for patients? I mean, how long do they have to come and, you know, get treated by us or each session needs to be how much time duration? Is that kind of finite or it's kind of depending on each condition? So this largely depends on patient's fatigability. Uh, this is, we usually start with, uh, so sir, since sir, uh, you know, the spine consultants send us references. As soon as the patient gets into the physiotherapy department, we start with the Scrotts techniques. Initially, it is around 15 to 20 minutes with, because like you said, it's an extensive and aggressive form of uh, treatment and it does uh, uh, cause a lot of pain as well. The pain is mostly stretch pain. So the treatment ranges from 20 minutes to 40 minutes and we do incorporate different uh, core strengthening programs also in this. So initially, in the first month, we have two follow-ups of two sessions and they have to follow home program. And then later, uh, there's a monthly follow-up, uh, which is around six months or a year or so. Uh, scoliosis uh, management in general takes a really long time because something which has happened structurally and the fascia or the muscles or the tissues overlining it takes a longer time to uh, sort of stretch back or re uh, you know, realign itself. So, yeah. So, in fact, uh, there has been evidence that only bracing uh, usually does not help. Wherever conservative trial is advocated, it's always a mix of bracing plus an exercise routine which needs to be incorporated together to have more lasting effects. And also mm -hmm. being a very cognitive, heavy uh, kind of exercise which Scrotts is famous for, it cannot be done in very children who have learning disabilities or you know that kind because it needs a lot of uh, patient uh, follow-up or patient uh, being uh, uh, kind of committed to that treatment 24 7 or all is waking us so that you know the treatment continues even when the patient is at home or if not in con contact with his therapist mm -hmm. mental, so preparation all, yeah. is, uh, mental preparation is the downside of uh, you know one of the downsides of scrub so that, that's why we teach auto correction exercises as well yeah, self correction yeah. side correction exactly mm -hmm. so anyways uh, all in all i guess we have had a very informative session about uh, at also idiopathic scoliosis it's one of those areas which is not very well um, kind of many people do not venture into it with full uh, this thing especially the physiotherapist so a lot of clinical therapists who are out there and who will encounter thinking that, you know, it does involve a large uh, proportion of the, so if you look at the prevalence of even 2%, you know, it's, uh, we are looking at quite a number of kids, you know, who are going to be suffering with this condition and who are going to be re requiring conservative as well as surgical management for kind of dealing with this problem. And it's a long drawn affair, which is kind of, you know, going to take many, many years in which the patients will be in constant uh, follow up with their doctors as well as their physiotherapists and both have their equally important role to play in managing the patient. Uh, so thank you from the entire Physio TV team. Uh, we also thank our chairperson, Dr. Chairman, Dr. Paraksan Chethi for supporting the Physio TV activities and our executive director, uh, Mrs. Manisha Sangvi. Uh, we also thank Dr. Dr. Ashok Sham from Ortho TV to kind of support Physio TV in all its activities and being a collaborative partner for us. And uh, I end this with a warm uh, thank you to both our speakers. And I hope we have such associations of surgeons and physiotherapists and talks of this kind in near future. So keeping that as a promise, uh, we sign off. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye-bye and namaste. Thank you. Thank you.